As a result of the chemical emissions crisis at the Crimean Titan plant, Ukraine's state border guard service has restricted movement at checkpoints Chaplinka and Kalanchak in both directions. More than 60 border guards have sought medical assistance. Movement in and out of Crimea is now practically closed. Exceptions are only allowed for those entering Ukraine's Kherson region for medical help and in relation to chemical emissions. Rumors are spreading that the checkpoints will reopen soon. Some people believe this. I think they have reopened. I'll get on TV and we'll have issues as a result. What issues? Relax, we have freedom of speech. No, I didn't mean you. I mean that they don't take photographs of us. Let's not mention where we are going. Okay, so don't fail, maybe. She's scared. We met these women at the Kalanchak checkpoint on September 10th. They read on the internet that the service will resume today. Some of them need to get to Armensk, which is four kilometers away from here, but they now need to take a big detour to get to Crimea. On the opposite of the Crimean Strait lies the Chonhar checkpoint, which has continued normal service. Despite the fact two of the three checkpoints are closed, we haven't seen any long queues here. We are observing the trend of decreasing crossings of the administrative border. Today, almost 7,000 citizens and 1,000 vehicles have crossed in both directions. The resort town Henichesk neighbors Chernhar. There aren't many holidaymakers here, but the off-peak season continues. The emissions from nearby Crimea are not affecting people's holidays. How's your holiday going? We like it. Have you not heard about what's happening in Crimea, in Armensk? No. No. What do you mean? The emissions from the Crimean Titan. No, we haven't heard. People don't talk about that kind of stuff here. Everything is fine for us. Where did you travel here from? From Zaporizhia. And how's your holidays so far? It's nice. We've been going on holidays here for 15 years. Have you heard what happened in Crimea? The emissions. We have. Does it worry you? No, it's fine. Why would it worry me? Because of the atmosphere or something? Do you not think you could travel here? And what can we do about it now? We didn't think about it, honestly, we didn't think. We have come from Dnipro. And how's Henichesk been so far? I like it in general. Have you heard the news about what's happening in Crimea, the harmful emissions? I've never even heard about that. Of course these things are always concerning. What's happened there? There was a technogenic accident at the Crimean Titan plant. Mm. That's very sad. We are heading from Henichesk along the administrative border to the residential areas affected by the emissions, the Chaplin and Kalanchak districts of Ukraine's Kherson region. According to the media reports, they have taken away children from several villages in this area and, as the locals highlight, not as a part of an evacuation, but for health reasons. One of such villages is Hrihorivka in the Chaplin district. Right now several children have gone to stay with grandparents, so their attendance today is about half full. It turned out that not everyone wanted to travel so far. Parents insisted that schools and kindergartens remain open. The parents insisted that the educational institutions stay open because, as weekends have demonstrated, the children spend more time outside than they do in educational institutions where there is control. One recommendation is to limit certain activities, such as physical education and so on. Right now we don't see any reason to create more panic. The various forms of media don't put out very accurate information. Some of the Crimean Titan storage units are located on this United Communities territory. The company previously reimbursed the local budget for the pollution. And then this money would go towards a new ambulance, for example. But then, after 2014, everything that the Ukrainian branch of the Crimean Titan pays to the local budget goes on rent for the storage sites. Titan only pays ecological collections and fines to the occupying government in Crimea. Titan rents 70-something hectares of our territory, located under those asset settlers. Today, they pay land tax through the Ukrainian branch. But before, they used to ecological taxes, and today there are no payments for that. Unfortunately, we cannot influence this in any way. With regards to the pollution, there probably is some pollution. And this was repeatedly initiated by us, district state administration. But we need to set permanent points to record the emissions. 
Unfortunately, no one has listened to our propositions or acted upon them. We have now moved closer to Titan. The village of Perša is the closest source of pollution to the Chaplin district. Today, September 9th, we see that there is no longer smoke coming out of Titan. Perša resident Serhii Mikhailchenko, says that he found out about the emissions in Armensk in August because of the effect it was having on his health. My mouth was really dry. No. Like I was diabetic. It was really dry. This year's harvest was bountiful, but it's not clear yet whether or not they can eat the produce left after the chemical emissions. Locals show us wrinkled grapes, apples, pears, which developed strange spots overnight. We didn't eat straight away, but today I ate an apple. I peeled it and I ate it. The grapes have gone off completely. We had it before too. When did it happen to it? Straight away, it rained first. Then on the 23rd there was an explosion or something, and it gave us this, and the apples. But that was due to the winds, the branches just snapped. And here are the grapes. Nothing, it's all gone. This used to be a nice yellow pear. And what happened to it? It's all because of the emissions. And the apples, too. Is this what you mean? Yes, these spots. The red ones. Yes, yes. Here they are. Here, here, and here. Here there are many of them. It would be good to pick one and test it in a laboratory, whether it's okay to eat them. Further on, there is another Kherson village, which has suffered even more from the chemical emissions in northern Crimea, Preobrazhenka, formerly Chernovy Chaban, which became a center for the urgent evacuation of children to the health resort in Skadovsk as a result of the ecological situation. There are only 12 school children left in the village, who are now studying remotely. The other 158 were taken away. We had two commissions here, the Hessen Health Department and Kalinchuk Department, so basically the town of Kalinchuk. And our nurses were examining the children too. There were complaints about dry throats, headaches, but the children were not hospitalized after detailed examination, because some of them turned out to be allergic reactions, some fakers even. There are also signs of acid precipitation in the village itself. Metal surfaces have rusted, and the leaves on the trees appear as if they've been burned. Here, look, sweet corn. And here are the potatoes. This happened overnight? Yes, everything has been taken from people's gardens. There is nothing left. And look at all these trees. These trees are bare. It's gone completely bare. The grapes have somehow been preserved, but my neighbor's grapes have gone off. Maybe it depends on the type. Locals say they have always been emissions from Titan, even before occupation. But before, there was a way of submitting complaints, and the emissions have never been this intense. The point is between you and me. It's always happened here, but this is the first time it's been at this level. Yes, there have been smells before, so we could close our windows and with the wind it would go. But to have a residue, it was just all wet. Do you understand? Maybe it's due to a high concentration of acid. Who knows ex what exactly is happening? And those who say that the soldiers dropped a shell 40 kilometers away, that's just nonsense. The plan did that. Last night, 13 turkeys died suddenly at this farm, probably because they ate grass, which still has poisonous substances in it. There are ads in all public spaces around here warning people about the dangers of grazing cattle and poultry in the open air. However, as the cows go out to pasture, we meet some people who say they've never heard about these warnings. There are leaflets going around that you can't graze your cattle here. No, I've never seen those. This is the second day I haven't seen smoke coming out of Titan. And the air feels clean, everything stabilized after the rain. The rain cleared everything. And how's the milk? Is it okay? Yes, it's perfect. Perfect milk. There, further, there's radiation. Well, not radiation, but pollution. We go to the other side of the village, to the street located closer to Crimean Titan. We hear about a few more cases of people's poultry dying. It was this morning. They were fine in the evening. You get up in the morning and there's chickens lying there. And did many of them die this way? I don't know, there's maybe 10 or 11 left. But there were 25. And at this farm, 
two chickens are about to die. About a month ago, they started to go blind first, and now they're dying. When they can't see, they don't eat anything and die. How many of your chickens have died? Around 10, I think. This goat, which was white before the emissions crisis, now has an unusual tint. Here she is, and she's turned brown on that side. When did it happen? Just now. It spoiled the milk. I boiled it and it went grainy. I showed them the fence. What kind of fence do we have? It's a shame. We spent so much money on it and now it's completely rusted. The local government, I don't know, but soldiers sprayed the streets. And that's it. But what can they say? Of course they should help somehow, do something. And can they? Hardly, because how much can they do in this situation? It's not their fault. They do what they can. To find out how many people have suffered because of this, we went to the Kalanchak district hospital. They say that there are regularly checking children and adults in the affected villages. But there haven't been any cases of hospitalization because of harm caused by chemical elements. All these cases have occurred because of seasonal environmental pollution and chronic illnesses. Three children have been referred to the regional children's hospital for cold-related diseases. They are treated there for free. We are in the Kherson region now, but the regional administration officials are in Kiev today for a press conference. The head of the Kherson Regional State Administration, Andriy Gorteyev, stated that the ecological situation in Kherson is completely under control. The fruits and vegetables from the affected farms are edible. The grains have all been cut down, there's only sunflower left. There's basically production processing. The acid deactivates the production in this process. Regarding the fruit and vegetables, we've handed out reminders to everyone on what to do in this case. You need to wash the affected fruit and vegetables in a lot of warm water. We are in the center of Kherson, and we've not come empty-handed. When the residents of the nearby villages found out from Andriy Gorzeev that they can eat all the foodstuffs, apples, for example, that grow in their gardens, they wanted to pass their food over to the Kherson officials, and we agreed to help them. No one from the regional administration was able to speak to us. They are all out of town. We were directed to the leadership of the regional health department. They said that the emissions really are bad for people's health, but the effects short-term. And they agree with Gurdjieff, you can't eat the fruit from the affected villages if you wash it. Vegetables, fruit, which is now in the field, directly in the gardens, which people grow. You need to wash all fruit and vegetables well, not like you normally would. You need running water and alkaline solution. Look, we've brought some apples. We have washed a little bit, but maybe you could show us how to do it. This is from Persia Kostantinivka. And this is from Preobrazhenka. I've been to both places. Would you eat these apples? If I wash them well, yes, I definitely would. So, will you please help yourself? What do you mean? Well, let's wash them. Where can we wash them here? It's an office. I've been to those villages, and trust me, the foodstuffs that you get there, if they are washed properly, you can eat them. Please, these are for you. Okay, thanks. I will wash them properly with soap. You know, just so all of this is fair and square, it would be good for you to eat one of those. Otherwise, people won't believe that you ate it. Who will not believe you? The residents. And the fact that I lived with them for an entire week and I didn't even wear a mask, is that not good enough an evidence? Well, let's just wash these apples and you try them. Okay, I'll ask someone to wash them and I will eat them. It's not a problem. Maybe you could have brought some sausage from there, some lard that we could chop up. I wouldn't need to have lunch then. Well, there was a turkey and a chicken, but the meat is now useless. The permanent representative of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea is confident that the evaporation from the dried-out acid storage at the Crimean Titan plant has had a negative effect on the environment, but the situation's sharp deterioration is a result of the technogenic accident at the Titan plant.
These asset settlers have not affected anything. The only way of stopping these emissions is to completely stop the plant, completely shut it down, and there are no other ways. Russian propaganda outlets speculate over this subject these days in order to force Ukraine to resume the water provision. But I will repeat again, this does not affect the ecological problems at the plant in the slightest. For us, the best way to stop this is to shut the plant down completely. The ecological disaster could have been avoided if in 2014 Metro Firtash was not given the green light from the Ukrainian Cabinet of Ministers and the Parliament in the form of the law on so-called free economic zone in Crimea, thanks to which the factory has operated using raw materials from Ukraine for the past four years of occupation. Unfortunately, today we have this incredible law on Crimea, which allowed these companies to operate both in occupied illegal jurisdictions and in Ukrainian jurisdictions. We are now working on proposals for the president to abolish the relevant rule of law, which for many years have been causing this ecological disaster. We need to make a final decision. Are they lawbreakers? Then they shouldn't operate within the Ukraine's legal framework. And if we like it, then let's continue inhaling it. But something tells me that we will take all possible measures to make it impossible for these companies to operate, both in legal and organizational ways, because this has now already crossed the red line. To stop operations, it would be enough to impose sanctions on Firtish's company, which transports Ukrainian ilmenite to the occupied peninsula. And despite numerous journalistic investigations, appeals to the Ukrainian Ministry of Economic Development and directly to the minister Stepan Kubik himself, the scheme has continued to operate for several years. A new shipment of concentrated ilmenite was sent to Crimea via Odessa on September 7th, at the height of the ecological disaster.